Good morning and welcome to our Palm Sunday service, meeting once again under unique and strange circumstances, separated from each other, but united by the blood and the body of Christ. Here we are again together entering Holy Week. Today I want you to ponder this mystery. How often do we see people built up only to see them demolished a few weeks or months later? Our icons, pop stars, royalty, movie stars, politicians, we make them idols, then all too quickly turn on them when they disappoint us. Often they're hiding behind social media and a cloak of anonymity. Jesus knew us and he knew our human nature. The crowds who lined the road to cheer him into Jerusalem would soon change and call for his blood. Even the disciples were fickle when the going got tough. So today we ask, what kind of Christian are we determined to be in pressed circumstances? Fair weather friends of Jesus or just following Jesus to see if we can get something out of it? Are we prepared to follow him through the difficult times? Are we prepared to stick with Jesus when we realise just how much peace on earth really costs? That is the challenge of Palm Sunday, to consider what part we want to play in the story. Today, I will not preach, just read from scripture. And I ask you simply to listen and meditate on the Palm Sunday and Passion Time scene and let it question you. So, Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Grace and mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. And today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share in his risen life. I have here a collection of palm crosses, which we have bought, and uh, we are now going to bless them. So each one of you can receive one of these when we're able to meet again. So let us pray. God, our Saviour, whose Son, Jesus Christ, Enter Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us a sign of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we read our palm gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you, just says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him that followed were shouting, 
Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowd was saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We pray our collect for this Palm Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Old Testament in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helped me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We come now in our service to our Passion Reading, which is the shortened one in the lectionary. The longer version is attached as a link in your email, uh, which is the full dramatic reading. You may wish to watch that later uh, to get the full uh, sense of the scene. As for us this morning, we take the Passion story with Jesus standing before Pilate. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Our reading is Matthew chapter 27, verses 11 to 54. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd anyone that they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. 
while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood, see it to yourselves. The people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed on his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and wept and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split. The tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered in the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, 
looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers, go make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. This is the passion of the Lord. So as we ponder our own place at the foot of the cross and standing at the tomb, let us bring our intercessions to Almighty God. Let us pray. Luke's Gospel says, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Kings have not brought peace, yet here was the real King. We are transported back to the time of Jesus' birth, the hillside where the shepherds heard the cry, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among the people of his favour. Let us pray for the peace of the world, a world that desperately craves the peace of Christ. Almighty God, as we approach Holy Week again, the story of Christ's passion helps us to truly understand the sacrifice he made. Despite being unable to gather in our churches, we give thanks for the technology that brings us together, enabling us to be together in spirit as we relive the Easter story. May that story fill us with hope and confidence that there will be an end to the chaos of this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of Christ the servant in the words of St. Ignatius. Holy God, teach us to be generous. Teach us to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed, heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for reward save that of knowing that we do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of Christ at prayer while his disciples sleep. Gracious God, we recognise that sometimes we put off prayer. We give way to our human frailty. We thank you for those who pray and intercede on our behalf, our priests and chaplains, bishops, members of religious orders, and all those who are praying faithfully in their homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of Christ betrayed with a kiss. Almighty God, please help us never to abandon someone in their time of greatest need. Help us to forgive those who have wounded and abandoned us. Cleanse our hearts from bitterness so that we may be more like Jesus, who was abandoned and betrayed by those closest to him. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We think of Christ falsely tried. Merciful God, we pray today for those facing the mockery of justice, knowing that there is no fairness for them, that their sentence may lead to a long term of imprisonment or even to death. Remember too those who languish in jails that are overcrowded or inhumane, and those who await their fate on death row in many countries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of Christ tortured and violently executed. Everlasting God, your son was tortured, beaten and humiliated and sentenced to agonising death, though he had done no wrong. We pray for all prisoners throughout the world and ask you to be with them in the darkness of their prison cell and the loneliness of separation from those they love in their fear of the fate, in the face of torture, execution and death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of Christ's compassion despite the way he received none himself. Loving God, we pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing, especially our health services, who are bravely caring for those who are in need in this worldwide crisis. We pray for those in Northwick Park, especially our local hospital, and all that those that are sick. We pray for them, the sorrowful, those who have recently died, and those who are bereaved by their passing in these most troubled times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, as we move into Holy Week, we commend ourselves and all those uh, among whom we live, for whom Christ suffered, to his mercy and protection. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. You stand as we share the peace with each other. If you're with others uh, in your household, then you can share the peace with them as we would normally do. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood. For he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us offer one another a sign of peace. We have now a short time of worship which uh, you are welcome to join into um, please um, if you have the words in front of you sing along uh, as we worship the Lord uh, in this Palm Sunday service
Now we come to uh, sharing the Eucharist together. I'm aware that this is strange and separate and foreign to the way we normally do it, but if you have elements in front of you, please feel free to partake as if we were together. Jesus, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live, let us share your death and passion. Make us perfect in your love. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draw near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, shared it with them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup of wine. Again, he gave you thanks, shared it and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. We plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth and your kingdom comes. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to be with you forever at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus encouraged us to call God our Father, we have the confidence to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, and as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray together. Faithful God, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this Eucharist service in whatever way you've been able to do it. Uh, thank you for allowing me to do it in this rather uh, informal and strange way. But may the Lord bless us this week as we enter Holy Week and may the mysteries of Easter become even more powerful in our minds and souls as we contemplate the situation around us. Please do lift up all those who are working so hard to protect us and heal us, especially those in Northwood Park, our chaplain there, David Byrne, Father David. Please pray for him this week. We stand for our blessing. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen.
and made Christ who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of the cross. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.